So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make three different animal prints uh, from watercolour. So um, one is going to be a leopard print, the second one is going to be tiger print and the third one is snake print. So at the moment you can see I'm just mixing up my colours. Don't worry too much if you don't get it completely accurate and watercolours aren't very strong. Um, if you have acrylic then you could also water that down and that would work in the same way. So I'm just mixing up these colours and I'm just now applying just water, just completely plain and now I'm dipping in the brush to the colour I've already made and I'm just dotting it on, just dabbing the paint on and what that wet underlay is going to do is it's going to make that colour that I add kind of um, sort of fade out and it's going to create a sort of furry texture. Remember to vary the shapes, they, the lines get thicker and thinner and they've got quite rounded edges as well so don't do anything too harsh, you don't want anything to be uh, going into a point in this uh, leopard print pattern. Now I'm just going to go over with the pen but I'm not really worrying about uh, going in, well I am going in that same horizontal direction but also I am drawing around it so I want a lot more of a solid shape and I still kind of want to see that pencil underneath um, just around the edges to show that furry texture and it's only slightly furry you know it's probably uh, you know very short fur um, so it's not kind of like fluffy and sticking out and going in different directions it's very small uh, small little lines. I'm just now going back in with the pencil just to add a little bit more of that texture um, and I'm also going to use a 
colour pencils, so like orange and brown, uh, where I didn't necessarily get that with my watercolour the first time round. Whatever you do, don't add water to colour at this stage now because that is going to make that pen bleed and it's going to ruin the whole thing. So you kind of have to guess at, at the start how much watercolour you need, but you could always go um, in like I have now with the colour pencil just to bring out any any of those tones that you didn't quite get round to the first time round and obviously this adds texture as well but it would have taken you a lot longer if you'd have done this just in colour pencil at the start rather than just giving a quick wash of watercolour. So for the tiger print you're going to want uh, to mix up some brown into the oranges as well. You don't want to just go, oh, a tiger's orange, I'm going to make orange. You've got to have brownie oranges, and I'm going to use the colours from before that was more of a, a yellowy brownie colour. Remember with watercolour that you can make uh, or change how dark something is by simply adding or taking away water, adding water to make it looser. So you can just play around with that, but also you're going to need to mix in those sort of redder tones. But there's not actually a lot of red, it's mostly brown with this, so just really try and ignore the stripes and things and the patterns. Um, and now I'm just adding some just plain water, just those edges, and just kind of blending those out. So whenever you find that it starts to get um, some of the paint on it again, then rinse it uh, with the water and then blend out again. Obviously you can build up the colour more, um, if you need to take any away just use um, a bit of paper towel or something, just, just dab it on the paint and it will lift up some of that paint that you've just put down. Um, now here I want to blend that out because it, it blends into a white but it's not really white so if you look really carefully you can see that there's lots of different tones, there's actually not really much white in this um, image at all. So look at that white tone and think right what is there, it's kind of a little bit brownie but it's also quite grey, it almost goes into a slightly blue tone so I'm going to use um, a grey down there just to kind of blend that out slightly. Don't forget you can add more paint in that style that we did with the leopard print earlier as well where you can, because the paper's already wet, when you add the paint it's going to kind of blend out so if you wanted any um, because I've thought very clean lines, you would not do that while the paper's wet. So if you were thinking of adding the stripes on uh, the black stripes onto this in watercolour, you'd have to wait for this to dry. So remember here just to add that slightly grey tone because you don't want it to look white, not as white as the paper. Around here is where you can really see more of a furry texture. The fur's probably a little bit longer, so I'm going to add kind of little, lots of little lines and dashes to create that furry effect. But I can still draw into it later on. Remember that watercolour needs to be dry before you do this. Um, and now I'm just adding in those patterns with pencil and they're quite um, like diamond shapes. So imagine just drawing lots of diamonds onto this and kind of in a staggered way, but there's no um, particularly neat pattern to them. And part of this picture, the um, tiger is actually curved. So 
some of those shapes towards the bottom are getting a little bit more distorted and also where the fur is longer um, they're not quite as defined they might be a little bit furrier around the edges the point of sketching this all in is just to make sure it's all in the right place because i'm going to go in with the pen over the top because it needs to be quite dark you could also do this with pencil i'm going to show you half with pencil and half with pen just to compare how the two work and both work well but you can just experiment and try different things see what or use whatever materials you've got at home so pay attention to the thickness of the lines here so see i've just added in that thickness um, and look at the negative shape uh, negative space of the shapes as well so look at around the pattern uh, around the black lines and inside the black lines and look at that shape rather than just looking at the black lines and drawing those try and look at the negative space of the picture this one's where it gets a little bit more distorted and so i'm using um, my pen just to create a little bit of texture around the edges where i see it where it's not so uh, such a clean line Pay attention to any shapes that don't really apply to this sort of typical diamond shape. Here the patterns are getting kind of blurred together, so just really observe what you're looking at. And again, it doesn't really matter if you get it exact. If you get one stripe out of place or something, it's, it's not really going to be a big deal. But you do want to observe, observe it as accurately as you can. Um, but don't worry if, if something's uh, just, just slightly out because it's not. These are imperfect shapes anyway, so if something was slightly odd, it, it wouldn't matter. So you can see with the pencil it's going to be a lot lighter, but because the watercolour is already light, um, it could work. And if you've got um, a pencil like a 4B or a 6B, basically a darker pencil, then this actually could work nicely. And I'll show you even if you could go in with something like Biro or a fine liner on top just to bring out any of those extra dark bits because really those those lines they are black as in we know that they're probably black fur but because of the 3d nature of the shape it's not going to be you know you're still going to get lighter tones in so you're still going to get grays and things so first take your time to draw out this spiral shape which can be tricky to get it even so just take your time with that remember you're doing it in pencil and it's underneath the watercolor so you can really easily rub it out as long as you're drawing lightly and then I'm just doing a wash over first of this slightly minty green. Um, I think the picture's come out a slightly different colour to what it looked like on my screen when I was working with it. So um, it might not be quite the same colour, but it's fine. should still be able to get the texture. Um, so now, while that is still wet, I'm just going in with a grey along those lines. And I want it to kind of blur out because if you look really close at the picture, it's very it kind of fades out in a... In lots of little dots um, which you can of course do in pen or something afterward this is kind of just my underlay I just want to give it that just general texture first I don't want to be painting on any neat lines at the moment I've just gone a little bit dark here so as usual just use a little bit of um, like a bit of kitchen towel or something just to um, pick that up and now I'm getting using a very watery grey just to blend that out even more. I'm still using that kind of motion of dotting the paint on. So I notice in this whole video, hardly ever am I actually just painting like brush strokes over anything. Maybe just for a quick wash like I did in this background. But otherwise, it's not something you really need to do a lot in watercolour. You shouldn't be sort of brush, uh, making loads of brush strokes. And that's where people go wrong a lot of the time. So um, if you're doing that, then try and stop that and just really think about how you're applying the paint and just try different things because it's not going to work straight away. So now again, I'm, I'm dotting those on. The paper's still wet, um, but it's not as wet as before. And you could even wait until um, this is completely dry to do this. I didn't mind if it sort of blurs a little bit because it can kind of mix into that green. So I've added the yellow and I'm obviously observing the picture all the time looking at where those patterns are but i'm not worried about them being too exactly in the right place again i did a little bit too much green just use a 
paper towel just to take some of that off. I've added a little bit too much there again, um, but I'm going to pick that up. Every, so every time I go to paint a different section, I'm just going to pick it up from that area where that was a little bit too dark. Or you could use a paper towel. You probably will make mistakes in this, but just don't worry about it. Just learn to deal with it. The thing with watercolour is it's very unpredictable and it kind of does its own thing. So you, you have to expect it, something not to go right with it. So don't worry if it's not turned out exactly as you want. Just try and find ways to fix it. And if not, you'll just learn how to do it, what not to do next time, hopefully. So my picture hasn't got much depth to it at the moment. So I'm just going back in with that grey. As I can see, it's a lot darker on the on the reference picture. So I'm actually kind of uh, stroking that paint on now because I just want it to be in that very centre of that grey line. I don't want to go over all the bits that I did to that were kind of uh, that I wanted to fade out. But this is just the really like getting in into the depth of that shape. Um, and now I'm using a pencil just to create more of that texture because there's lots of. I mean, when you look really close up, it's almost like lots of diamond shapes and lines and things um, but I'm doing a kind of squiggly um, a little squiggly line just to get that idea down uh, just quickly rather than me trying to be too detailed yeah if you wanted to do a super realistic picture then you could um, like really really look but it would take you uh, probably like 10 hours or something and that's not what I'm expecting so just your lines here so I'm doing like these directional lines think about what you would do if you were doing a cylinder that direction because really when you think about it this is like a cylinder or like a long tube just curled round um, and obviously it gets thicker and thinner so think about those directional lines and how you would shade a cylinder <laughs> 